by grace. I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. Thank you again for joining us tonight for Not Without Blood, brought to you by Crossway Ministries. You know, we understand completely and wholly that it is a privilege to come into your household, that you could turn anywhere you wanted to turn on the uh, TV, but we are just so thankful that you have chosen and made a decision to study God's Word with us. It is an honor and a privilege to bring you a word from the Lord. It is an honor and a privilege to uh, attempt to teach His Word through and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we just hope you will join with us uh, with a notepad, with a Bible. Follow us uh, as we go through Scripture uh, line by line as we look at the Word of God together and allow the Holy Spirit to do the teaching. We come with an open mind that the Spirit will do the teaching. And before we start the program, let's pray. Father, again, as we always do, we just ask for the person of the Holy Spirit, the true teacher, be in complete control. Father, may no one see any of us here, but may they only see and hear you, and may they receive from you, in Jesus' name, amen. As we... Uh, start our uh, study tonight. We're going to be studying uh, in Romans chapter 9. If you want to turn there, we're going to start in Romans chapter 9, verse 30, and go through uh, Romans 10, 4 probably. We're going to be teaching on uh, righteousness again, and how God's approach to righteousness is different than a lot of uh, denominations and a lot of uh, Christian thinking, but God has a set plan for righteousness. We uh, are extremely proud and, uh, you know, glad to have a, a friend of ours with us uh, to be uh, on the panel tonight. Uh, we welcome Pastor Daryl Little. He is a pastor of the Nation's Worship Center, uh, Indicator. Daryl's had a ministry there for approximately 10 years. And um, we just welcome you, Daryl, and we uh, look forward to your insight into the Word of God uh, and sharing it with the uh, people. So let's, uh, let's read our scripture uh, first, and then we'll go back and, and do a little bit of dissecting. In Romans chapter 9, verse 30, it says, What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Verse 32, Wherefore, be, meaning why, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Verse 33, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. I'm going to stop there and we'll discuss that before we go on to chapter 10 and uh, verses 1 through 4. So what Paul is doing is, if you go back to uh, the, the first part of, of Romans chapter 9, he has a heart for the children of Israel to be saved. Uh, he, he, he knows that they are following after a path that they have rejected the Messiah, and if they reject Christ and and what in His finished work, He knows they will 
never uh, through their works be saved. Uh, <clears throat> Daryl, as we look at this, we all have uh, family members that are, are lost and loved ones that are lost that, that don't want have anything to do with God. Uh, once you come into understanding of the message of grace, it really gives you a different perspective as far as souls go. Uh, the, the, the individual, no matter what his condition, you, you go from, or at least I did, you go from condemnation to compassion. Amen. Uh, as a pastor in a church, you deal with uh, a, a, a lot of people that the world or the Christian community may say there's no hope for them. Yeah. Uh, how do you minister to those people? Well, uh, Leroy, I uh, minister the grace of God as you just spoken it, that uh, Jesus Christ, he died for us all. The Lord said, right. you know, because he said he, whoever will believe on him would be saved. He said he That's for the whole world. And uh, it really doesn't matter when you're talking about grace and righteousness. It doesn't matter what you've done before you hear the message of the cross. It doesn't matter. The Lord will forgive Amen. you of every single solitary sin. And so uh, we preach a lot of grace there because uh, I think it's First Timothy opens up telling us who the law was for. Was for. Right. And, and that is really referring to the message of the cross, who the message of the cross is for. And it's for every person, no matter how bad uh, they might have had, might, no matter how bad a life they might have had before uh, the message of the cross, they can uh, can be saved, and uh, but Leroy, sometimes people have gone through some bad things, done some bad things, and man, you really have to work at uh, sharing with them that Jesus will forgive them uh, no matter what. Well, who is who has put them down the most, Pastor? Has their friends in the world put them down, or has so-called people in church the reason? that it's so hard to get them to believe that they can be saved. Uh, Leroy, I, I, I must, uh, I hate to say it, but <laughs> it's really been the church. Right. It's been the church. It's been... Uh, <clears throat> through condemnation. Through condemnation. Right. Through condemnation. Uh, religion, uh, it's, it's been deadly. The damage is done to, uh, to people. Uh, you know, we're we talking about the, uh, the Israelites trying to attain righteousness by works, but... Really, almost all my life growing up, and I won't call any denominations tonight, uh, I was taught to, to be good. Right. And, uh, and I finally understand what Jesus told the young <laughs> ruler. <laughs> it's rough. Right. It's tough trying to be good. Sure I, is. I, I, I need to let that one of those zeros go in, in good <laughs> and, and run for God. You know? Run for God. Run for grace. And uh, that's, why, that's why I really enjoy uh, the message of grace and the message of the cross that you minister and teach to this North Alabama region because... Uh, friend, we're, we're not giving you a license to do to do wrong. What we're saying no. is, when you've done wrong, we're giving you a license to run to grace. Well, they run to grace, and you know, grace is not grace, and the freedom that we have in grace is a, is not a freedom to sin, but it's a freedom to serve God. To serve God, that's right. And if we can understand. And, and can proclaim that the freedom of grace is to serve, but not sin. That's right. And it gives me the strength to serve yeah. and not sin. And not sin. That's right. Uh, but as long as I'm chasing after righteousness in and of my own ability and my own strength, uh, it's not a righteousness that God will accept. That's right. Because he's established his own ways of righteousness. Ways of righteousness. So yeah. when you minister to people that their friends in the world has not put them down, but people so-called in the body of Christ condemned and put them down, it's a sometimes a long process, isn't it? Yes. To get them believing that God has not thrown them away. That's right. It, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. It's tough. And uh, I've seen it uh, time uh, after.
after time, uh, it'll seem like some have received the grace of God. They'll come to church uh, for a while. But uh, the very next time that they slip up or mess up, uh, they think that it's the uh, end of the world. And uh, as we said uh, a moment ago, no, man, none of us have a free license to sin. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about in Romans 6 that, you know, how can we uh, that have received this grace from God continue in sin? No, we can't. We don't want to. Don't want to. No, we don't want to. We love God. But uh, the uh, desire is gone. Yes. Yes. He takes the desire. He takes it away. Right. He He changes my desire. But you brought up a good point. Even though when we mess up, God has provided a plan that we can still be His righteousness. No matter what other people may say, I can still stand here and say, I am the righteousness of God, not based on what I have done, but because of what I have done, I have turned to God and received His righteousness. Yes. Through faith. Now, if I tried to attain it by law, you know, Paul is very clear. Why is he writing all this? Because he has a heart and a compassion for his fellow countrymen. He wants to see people saved. If he didn't care about them, he said, eh, those people never will accept God. Yeah. You know, how many times have we always, have we said that about an individual? Uh, they're so far gone, they probably never will turn to God. Hmm. Well, that's the individual we need to go after. That's the individual. We don't have to convince him that he's not righteous. Yeah. He He's ready. He, he knows, just like me, I knew what a scoundrel I was. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could sit on a penny and my feet would hang off. I would <laughs> so low down. Uh, but, you know, but law didn't work for me. Yeah. Keeping rules and regulations did not it work. Did just work. made things worse. Made it worse. And... To get through to individuals, we just have to pray for the power of the Spirit to prepare them, but we have to be ready to minister. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right, Leroy. And I'll say this, brother. uh, As you're ministering now, I I was thinking about what happened to me when I received Jesus as Lord. Uh, It was an incredible feeling to not have to be cool no more. One of the things uh, back when I was growing up in my neighborhood, you know, everybody, all the guys, you want to be what they call cool. Right. And so cool was a, um, was a bunch of pressure to try to be somebody who you really weren't. You couldn't be your real self. And, I, and, I, and that's what I like about the message of the cross and, and the message of grace and righteousness by faith is it, it feels so good to not to have to do all this stuff myself. But Jesus has, has paved the way for us to take the load off. Right. And let him, he said... He would carry our burdens, bring our yokes, our burdens, put it on him, and and we'll just and then we just serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah, we transfer our burden, our load to him, and he transfers his righteousness to us. us. That's up. He takes a <clears throat> he takes the worst that I am, and gives me the best that he has. That's right. That's a pretty good deal. That's a real good deal. <laughs> that, that that's pretty good. That you know. Amen. Uh, take that all day long. Yeah. We looked at, uh, we turn and look at the board a second. You know, we're going to break this down as we go through the study. It'll, it'll take us a little while. But we'll break it down in, in Gentiles and Jews. The first thing that the Gentile had to understand and did when he was uh, in, in verse 30 through 33 is the first thing is renounce our own righteousness. Amen. Now this is something the Jews would not do. They would not renounce their own righteousness. They kept the thought pattern, yes, I can do this. It goes back to Exodus 18 when, when God told the children of Israel, you know, can you keep all this? Moses, you know, told them that, and they told Moses, yes, we can. Mm. Whatever God says, we will do it. 
child of God, we can't do it. There's nobody born since Adam except the Son of God that has ever been able to maintain perfect righteousness without sinning. That's right. So why do we continue to try? So the first thing I have to do is I have to renounce my own righteousness. It also says they were called. Now, if they were called, obviously it was by grace. That's the only way any of us are called is by grace. Did God call the Jews? Yes. He still called the Jews. He called everybody, as Daryl mentioned a little bit, his blood was shed to save the whole world. So uh, he, he does not have a limited atonement that his blood only atoned for some people and not for other people. His atonement was all-encompassing for everybody in the world. But they maintain, I don't need the blood. I don't need the finished work of Christ. So what did they do? They rejected They rejected Christ. Here, Gentiles never heard of the law. Yes. You know, they could have, they could have been jealous. God, you gave the law to uh, the Jewish community. You left us out. Wouldn't that be a reason for for them to be angry at God? Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah. That they could have been angry, but no, they said. God, I'm so happy you included me, yeah. that you've given me the opportunity. Uh, that's the way we minister to people. It's, as Pastor has said, no matter what you've done, when you've done it, God through His Son provided a sacrifice that was accepted by His Father. Yes. And based on that, we can be the righteousness of God. I am as righteous as the blood of Jesus makes me righteous. Amen. Uh, that's a hard concept for some people, even in the church, to accept it. That's right. That's right. And you know, Leroy, man, as you were sharing that, I was thinking about, uh, you were talking about how the Gentiles were just thankful that they got the opportunity to get in on, on such a great deal. You know, I believe they probably, from generation to generation, they was watching and looking at how good God was uh, to the Jews. And from, <laughs> from, from the time that the earth, earth began and, and the time that he chose Abraham out, those Gentiles, they, they, were, they were watching saying, man, God sure is good to them. Right. And so when they got an opportunity to, to get close to God, uh, they leaped on it. And, and I just wish more people would, would take a real hard look at just how good God is to to Christians and, and how God good how good he has been to the church and jump in on that deal. It's a it's like uh, you can look at Daryl and myself and uh, you can tell both of us like to eat. <laughs> and it's like somebody opening up a new restaurant that's got the greatest food or a do, new donut shop. Yes. And they hung a sign on the door that says for Jews only. <laughs> You mean I can't go in and eat this food? Yeah. Uh, mm, I sure do wish I could. Yeah. But then you drive by one day and there's a sign up there, everybody welcome. Everybody welcome. Praise God. Yeah. They were just ecstatic. They could go in and eat also. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even care. As one lady said, I'll just take the crumbs from the table. Mm. You know, just give me the crumbs. I'm satisfied with that. Yeah. The Jews had the whole table and rejected it. Mm. Gentiles, the first thing we have to do is renounce our own righteousness. Yeah. No matter whether you're Jew or Gentile. We're called by grace and then we, we get His righteousness. This is a faith righteousness. Not works righteousness. Yes. 
not a works righteousness. This is a faith righteousness. Let's go back and read the scripture again. Make sure we're, we're know where we are now. Verse 30. What shall you say then that the Gentiles which followed not after the righteousness have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? That is the reason we've got this progression here. The only way they could exhibit faith, they had to have faith that God gives them because God gives us a measure of faith. Yes. So for him to give us the measure of faith, he had to do it by grace and he would have given the Jews a measure of faith also if they had first renounced their own righteousness. Yes. But being they wouldn't renounce their own righteousness, he couldn't even give them he couldn't even give them the measure of faith to accept his righteousness. That's right. So again, righteousness by faith, not by works. Yes. Verse 31. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness. Now this is talking about the Mosaic law. Have not attained to the law of righteousness. Verse 32. Wherefore or why? Because they saw it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. So this over here tells me that very simple statement. Righteousness cannot be by works. And I'll put an exclamation point at that. Righteousness cannot be by works. Uh, Daryl, I've been there. You said before you've been there. How hard is it initially to admit this right here? How hard is it to admit that I can't do it? It can be it can be real hard, Leroy, because uh, you know, we've been taught since we were young to, to pave our own way. You know, that we've right. been trained all our lives to succeed. You know, on our own. Uh, you know, uh, especially as men, we've been taught to pull mm -hmm. our own load. You know, and uh, there's, there's some loads in life <laughs> you can't pull, and this is and uh, and this is one of them. You you have to come to to the Lord uh, by faith. Uh, the hardest thing on this is admitting I'm wrong. I, I was wrong in it. That's right. And a man, has, especially a man, has a hard time doing that. That's right. And that's right. And you know that's. You I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this up here. <clears throat> you know I'm gonna write messing up the board, but I normally <laughs> do that anyway. Uh, I have to admit that I'm wrong. That I'm wrong in what I was doing previously. Yes. And that doesn't come easy, does that it? It doesn't come easy. You know, and uh, another thing as you were sharing, I, I was thinking of, about how, how many times have you you uh, asked people to uh, come to church or, or you share people that there was a time for them to make a change, to come to the Lord, and, and they'll, tell you, they'll tell you, well, you know, when I get myself together, right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on. When I clean room, myself up. When I clean myself up. <laughs> And you know, uh, I, I, I share with our, with our church, please share with them that they can't do it. Right. Just can't do it. And I, I got this one fellow I've been working on a while, and I've been trying to get him to, I said, just come hear the word. I said, uh, that there won't be no opportunity for you to receive the gift of grace if you're not hearing the preaching of the cross. Right. And I said, don't, he, he, said, he said, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to finally get it together. And I said, no, <laughs> you, you're going to have to hear the word because the right. word of the Lord uh, the preaching on the cross, it, it, it'll, it'll change you and you'll realize that you can't do it. You have to let him help you and, and help you to live for God and accept the, the free gift of grace. And, and, and that's, that's the stumbling block to so many people is what you have mentioned on it. And of course you are very aware of it being a pastor uh, of how ingrained it is in us as either non-Christians or Christians 
how ingrained it, it is in us that we can do it. Yeah. I just haven't tried the right way yet. Yeah. 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 And, and if I keep doing this, God is going to come through based on my efforts. Yeah. Uh, I haven't found anybody that works yet. <laughs> it don't work. <laughs> uh, works do not work. It don't work. Works do not, not work. work. And and uh, Leroy, man, after 24 years of being saved and preaching grace, uh, when I mess up from time to time, if I'm not being, if I'm not aware, right, that that work stuff will still try to. Mm -hmm. Slide in in, mm -hmm. in in your thought life and, and, and cause you to be bound. Sure will to uh, to good deeds. And, right. Uh, th th this is not saying that you will never sin again. Yeah. I don't. I do. I proclaim. I do not think the Bible teaches sinless perfection. No. Now, there's a lot of people who believe that, and and a lot of denominations proclaim that. Uh, I do not teach that. The Bible proclaims that we can live a sinless, perfected life. Uh, should we use that as an excuse to sin? If you are, then you need to get saved. Because then you're thinking more on sin than you are thinking on Christ. If you're thinking of ways that you can uh, get by with things, then your motive is wrong and your heart had not been changed. So first thing you do, as Daryl mentioned a while ago, you need to get in a Bible teaching church that teaches the truth of the word. You know, John tells us in the first chapter that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what you've got to hear. You've got to hear grace and truth for a life to be changed. So what have we looked at today? We looked at... Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 30 through 33, and we're comparing the Jews and Gentiles, how the Gentiles did not have the law given to them, but yet they obtained righteousness by faith. The Jews having the law given to them, the Mosaic law, the covenant, uh, everything, e e even uh, the various covenants, they did not obtain righteousness because they were trying to do it by works. So as we go forward in this, we're going to delve into this a little bit more. We hope you will continue to join us. Uh, thank you for being with us. Have a blessed day and, and may you uh, just continue to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, Contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.